you know, this guy Daigo lost round one. Beast Daigo plays against Hibiki Lily. He didn't even have a warm up match. It's Daigo's round one match, Daigo loses. And then Hibiki lost right after. Imagine being this guy and like your round two match, you don't have to play Daigo. And then this person lost, dude. And then this, they, they all lost. Look how many losers bracket matches he won though. He went so far. Like Daigo, yeah, he made it all the way to top 32. He made it all the way to top 16 losers, actually, and lost to Mizuha. Everybody there is really good. Like, what can you do, right? It's the nature of the beast. Get on. Everybody's really good. There's not much you can do. Anyway, shall we check out the uh, top eight? The matches, by the way, this is not a joke. Luke versus Cammy. Luke versus Cammy. That was the winner's bracket. And then the loser's bracket was Ken versus JP. Ken versus JP. But it's actually, honestly, it's kind of funny. I, you know, I'm really sad. The biggest takeaway that I had from this is I'm really sad that... The US SFL, we can watch so easily, but the Japanese SFL, you cannot find. And it, like, okay, you can watch the Japanese SFL if you're in the US, right? But you can't restream it, you can't make content around it, you can't do anything. So nobody knows, but Kazunoko has been beating everybody to death in SFL, carrying his team on his back, playing like an absolute beast the whole season. And so when he was in top eight winners, I was not surprised. Honestly, it's like part of why they vote Kami so high, right? They have a lot of really good Kami players in Japan. In the US, like who are our Kami players, right? We have like, we have like one. Yeah, the jab gave him the uh, time there to do it. We have, we have like Punk, right? But after Punk, like who's playing Kami in the US at the highest level of play? Like the very highest level of play. It's like, you know, that's kind of it. Yeah, I do as a secondary. <laughs> It's like, that's it. I, it. But Kami is really popular in Japan. Like, honestly, this character is... You see her a lot. I mean, there's two in the top eight, right? So... You see that? Otani tried to do it again. He tried to use back heavy punch to sway like DJ during the... Um, what's it called? To, to sway during the drive rush. Also, right there, the knuckles are really scary because Kazunoko can't DI them because Luke has level three. So it makes it pretty bad. What's a god to a crouching medium punch from Luke, right? Oh, what's so deep? Yeah, I mean, Kazunoko is really good for all of Street Fighter 4. He, he was a beast. Like, he won the last Capcom Cup for... Yeah, exactly. He won the last Capcom Cup for Street Fighter 4. And he's good at every game he plays. He did the easy combo. Good choice. What up, Mr. Omar? And Otani is going to go up 1-0. Yeah, he was great at Street Fighter V also. I don't think Kazunoko has played a game seriously and been bad. I don't think he's ever, I don't think he ever has. Like, didn't he make top 8 at like Sam Show at EVO? <laughs> yeah, he was good at Exert. He's good at like all the Guilty Gear he's played, right? Good at Street Fighter V, good at Street Fighter Four. He's good at like every fighting game. You know what's funny is right before this, I was watching his Grimner replays in Grand Blue. Like he's like the he was like the number one ranked Grimner, Grimner when I looked. I'm pretty sure. Which is like really funny because I was like, has he even been playing Street Fighter Six? And then I saw he was in Top Eight winners, and I was like, oh okay. <laughs> like I I literally haven't seen him play Street Fighter recently. You're finished. Not enough. He had to spend level two. Oh wait, no, this doesn't kill though. No, he knows it's not gonna kill, and that's fine. However, trade. Yeah, there's not. Uh, there's nothing Otani could do when he did that there. Really, like he put himself in such a unfortunate spot because he has to avoid chip. This knuckle is zero on block. So if he hits jab, him and Kazunoko trade. So he could like his only thing was like reversal super there and hope that it beats the jab, and then Kazunoko did walk back spiral arrow immediate chip. That spot is really hard to win from because you have to not get chipped and you have to like gamble your meter in a really uh, like hard to salvage position. You know. Yeah, Kazunoko is really good at the original Grand Blue also. I mean, he's good at every game, you know. Oh, big punish. He was a little too late. He was confident he got it in time. Yeah. As a result, look how much damage he is going to eat on that bad hit confirm. It saved him so much drive gauge, too. He didn't drive rush at all. 
actually full. Oh, Kazunoko's. I mean, this round is... I don't know how you win this round as Kazunoko. Yeah. I mean, he's done everything he can to avoid burnout, but his life bar is just... Yeah. <laughs> Atani strolled right up. Kazunoko spent, like, all his life trying not to get burnt out. So he traded life for drive gauge, like, four times. But he just didn't have the life to survive, you know? Nice side swap. Notice that Kazunoko just backed off also. He didn't really want to overcommit on pressure, and his drive gauge is so low that doing any committed, committal offense there can get him in trouble, so he just backed up. That's like the most fun part about the system mechanics of this game, is that the drive gauge dictates your decision making as much as your life bar, as your super gauge, as like other parts of the game. That's really interesting. And it just like constantly comes up, like how much drive gauge you have dictates everything, like how you go for pressure, how you choose to defend, how you do all kinds of stuff, you know. What a resonation. Thanks for the 34, hope you're chilling. Just to keep it as a true block string, but then you sacrifice damage on hits. You can't react. No way. Oh. Baby. I like that choice because I think that would be dive kick. Also, she's dead. No, no not enough. Not quite, not quite. Oh my! This is so hard to win for Kaz though. Still, the spot's still tough. Otani has to give it away. I think. Okay. DP will give it away. Yep, doesn't go for it. Oh no! Oh my! Oh my! Nice block. Dude, he got punish counter whip punished on the standing leg kick by dive kick. I think his leg kick was like supposed to bait that. Like, he specifically was like, okay, cool. I'm going to just whip light kick to bait something so that I can jump. And then he just, yeah, he'll die. That was pretty rough. Otani is not Haitani. That's a different person. But also, uh, yeah, very well known. Strong Street Fighter player. Oh, Oh, nice. Do you take side swap here? No. I do appreciate that. Dash up, still in pursuit. Fierce the sand blaster. Too bad for Otani. Just barely made it over. Didn't make it over. The baseball player? It's the baseball player. He's getting, how much is he getting a year? Like 20 million or something? That's him. Nice. That was a good change up on the pressure from Kaz. Otani last time blocked light light and did reversal jazz, so this time Kazunoko did triple light and Otani did reversal crouching medium kick. Recognizing that he changes his uh, pressure up a little bit and the spacing was different. <gasps> You're so dead. That sucks. The timing was just not good for Kazunoko there. Kazunoko versus Capcom. Is that the first time he used that move in the set? Oh, he used it one time earlier. Okay, one time earlier. Nice, buddy. I think on he could have even gotten more damage than that, probably. I imagine on uh, punish counter, crouching jab, drive rush. You can just start with a medium, right? He just took drive gauge damage for Oki there. Yeah, Otani's goal here is just to pick apart the drive gauge, right? He has such a big lead. And Kazunoko, like, his drive gauge is so weak that you can just bully him like this. Oh, that's a punish. Terrible combo. That sucks. He could have done crouching jab, crouching heavy into... I love this pressure. Man, that was so good. All right, never mind. I take it back. Everything bad I ever said about you, I take back, Otani. Yeah, I think he's chilling. That was clean. Dude, this whole sequence is sick. So, this could have been crouching heavy bunch. He could have drive rush if he wanted to. He doesn't have to. But it could have been perfect knuckle, obviously, into a combo. And then, right here, I love this pressure he goes for, knowing that Kazunoko is now in threat of burnout. So he does standing heavy punch, drive rush, standing heavy punch, sandblast. Just keep it nice and simple. Just bop, bop, bop. Get the, uh, the drive gauge down. And then immediate reversal into the parry. Very good. He punished. He punished the drive gauge so well. After the level 3, Otani just targets his drive gauge. 
So he just beats up the drive gauge here. He's like, what up? Your drive gauge is all fucked up. And his drive gauge is now bad for the rest of the run. He never recovers his drive gauge enough so that he can do anything. Like, look look right here. He, he spends drive gauge on offense. He spends the three bars for drive rush. And then he loses the round because of it. Because now it's just, oh, cool. Like, heavy, heavy sandblast. And now you're in burnout. And the round's just over. He spent drive rush one time. He did one drive rush and he was burnt out. If you go into the last round of the game without a level three, you basically are at a huge disadvantage because someone can immediately take the drive gauge lead and then destroy you. They just like take take such a big thing. That's why, you know, a lot of people are like, man, drive gauge comes back so fast. You can spend it so frivolously. A lot of times in this game, when you spend drive gauge badly or your drive gauge gets stripped from a level three, you just you just like get burnt out and die like it's it's very common you know but people don't always talk about that as much because they're focused more on other stuff otani's whole game plan against kazunoko because luke has uh strong control of the neutral with his buttons and fireball is just to like smoke kazunoko's drive gauge like all he's doing is like let me do heavy punch sandblast heavy punch sandblast and target drive gauge so that kazunoko's in a bad spot Oh. You fish for it twice. You just did minus jab, fish for parry, minus jab, fish for parry. He gets tackle, yeah. Nice. He could have done a drive rush confirm, but I think he was already committed to that idea. Beast mode, baby. Yeah, her anti fireball tools are good against Luke. They're good against every fireball, honestly. Like her, her stuff's good. Wow, that's like the first time he's done anything like that this set. Four bars right away. Man, the spirit of Mena RD and Chris Wong put together. <laughs> and he has the mm -hmm. position. Jab, 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 sandblast also oh, very good. Partially because most characters, when they do jab, 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 and they push themselves away, they're minus, and you can threaten with an attack after, but sandblast is good to, to check it. Kazunoko tried to jump. Nice. No, we tried dash level two, and he missed it. What a ball child. Thanks for the uh, 36. He would have actually been close to winning and also in a really good spot in his drive gauge. It's it's a hard combo. That, that combo is... The link is really tight. Got him. Nicely done. Well played from Otani. Honestly, he just constantly punished every time Drive Gauge got spent. He just beat Kazunoko's Drive Gauge up badly. Does this matchup look familiar? Yeah, I don't think Drive Rush really ever got any offense for Kazunoko on block, really. Like, he just, he walked away and like, if you're going to throw me, throw me, dude. I don't care. Like, it didn't really give him any kind of offense that mattered. Going for those meaty, safe but minus drills, and he's really obsessed with Damn, he destroyed that crouching medium punch. Dead. What up, Angelo? Thanks, Bama. Good luck on winning stream awards. Thanks, man. Ah! And Kwano spent four drive gauge for not very much damage there either. Yep. In Japan, they do that so much. They they constantly fish for perfect parry on like every string. And a big reason that it's so valuable is that you have to delay your pressure then to make that not as good. And then it leaves gaps that you can, you know, reversal button, reversal whatever, and like get out. He can spend level 30 kill here. Oh, is this gonna kill? Oh, wow. That did a lot of damage. Not quite enough, though. What up, Scrambolini? Or Scramble Blombo, excuse me. Oh, he could have killed. Oh my, nah, Kawano's a beast. Oh, now Chip is a big problem. Yeah. Kawano's a beast for that defense, though. He did absolutely nothing. He just overspent on the drive gauge, sadly. But Akira, he could have killed on the combo. He had a, he had a chance, actually. But look at this. Now Kawano coming back here in round three and starting off. Mm -hmm. left oh, left. the huge and, uh, bet. Oh hurts. my god. Double bet. He's gonna build level three. He just built it. He had just enough. Bop, 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 bop. 
Dive bar, Jesus! I'm not even gonna ask the question. <laughs> he went all in, like he did a dive kick and then just sent it. Like pretty bad spot. Not only like even if he didn't die, like he was in burnout and dead, basically, right? Yeah, I mean, dude, it was in the corner against a three bar character with full gauge, like you were gonna explode. There's no way you live there. Luke's damage is high, but I think like I can't imagine most characters don't kill there. Yo, finish. Oh shit! Well, he's just gonna get chipped, though. No? Uh oh. Wow. What? Really unorthodox, really funky, but that. All right, he's a beast for that. He's got instant overhead, jump light kick on the mine. He's like, I got you, bro. I got you, no problem. I think Kawano's uh, reaction time and defense is unreal, though. It's like his dude, yeah. His reactions are they're ridiculous. Like I don't know how he does it. He just, he just, yeah. He was playing Punk, and Punk was like, "Why the fuck does this guy play Modern? Like, why was he playing Modern before if he can react DP?" like this on classic controls he's like what the fuck is he doing like why is he <laughs> oh, i like that idea he just did minus dash and then he tried to do back heavy punch to catch the uh the check oh no confirm he could have done light knuckle level three and killed there dude kawano's defense though at least for the flash how, how come he hasn't been hit? Oh, God, okay, now he sucks. Oh, my bad. No, you are so bad, Kawano. You never been good. <laughs> he actually was so solid for like 40 seconds and then said, fuck it. Why does he do so much EX dive kick? Yeah, EX dive kick is extremely good. Yeah. Regular dive kick is also good, but generally you get the most value from it when you're dive kicking over, um, like, what's it called? When you're dive kicking over pokes and stuff, whereas uh, it's not really that way for um, EX dive kick. EX dive kick is good, basically, always. Nice one. I like the fake, and I, I really like using Drive Impact to just strip the, the Drive Gauge there. He doesn't kill him. Oh, the reset. Drive Rush Heavy Gig. I like it. Sneaky reset. He's got to be laughing up a storm after that. Somebody check on his Yeah, Kawano won Evo. He's the Evo champ from the last year of Street Fighter V. He's the one that beat Idom in the finals. Wow, he drive rushed in and straight up blocked that. No flinch. He's just going to strip the drive gauge here. That's all Kawano's needs to do here. Yeah. That was basically your only chance. Like, your drive gauge is so low, you need to take a, a bet. Nice. Dude, that is not easy. That it's so hard to do that. Like, oh my dude, his reactions. I mean, Japan has thought Kami is top five or like really top tier for a while, and I, I think the reason is that. The region has so many strong Kami players, and she is really that good. It's just she's not as common here at a high level. Oh, he tried to bait the the drive uh, rush check. Nah, nobody anti air DPs dive kick at that consistently. Like it's really hard. If you're getting dive kicks anti air constantly, then you're really really predictable. Because it's really really high, hard to do it at a high level. Like if your opponent's good. Wow, he woke up. He just committed. Yeah. Now he's checking the strings into the fireball, right? Into the sandblast. I do like that from Akira. Yeah, he can only he can only check the strings like that because he's in burnout. It's really hard to like drive impact sandblast if your opponent's not in burnout. Especially in the heavy sandblast. He's like, I want my meter back. 
So I can do that. I can drive Rush into Suppressor. I actually saw there was a really cool... Oh, oh my... Dude, again. he is no so... What in the... God, the how? His reactions on these are <laughs> unreal. Somebody posted some interesting stats about, like, all the qualifying characters in all the regions and, like, who who is the most represented characters in, like, top threes of all the CBTs and World Warriors. I thought it was really interesting. Commentator curse, maybe? Because look at this. One hit into this great sequence. I'm, I am shocked. Wow, nice counter hit confirmed. And Cammy is still... Oh, he is going to fight. Yeah, he's dead. Good confirm. Yeah, I think it was Ken first, and then Luke or JP was second. Do centaurs have two rip cages or only one? Why not two? They just have one really long rib cage that goes all the way up. What do you mean? That's the first time I've ever heard you say that's not gonna kill him. <laughs> right? I mean, Instead I mean, of asking the question. Right. That's true, that's true. Oh man. I mean, Cammy's already really, really good without a standing overhead. Dive kicks are it's hard to explain how good having a dive kick is in a game like this. Like the ability to change your jump arc is so strong in Street Fighter. Because not very many characters have it. So like yeah. It is it is really hard to deal with. Oh no, he dropped it. That was that was like a game winning hit right there. What a perfect parry. I think he, he kills here even through the scaling. He would kill even a level two. Yeah, he he has um he has a pretty wild reactions and even he misses dive kick sometimes. Yeah, punish counter dive kick is absurd, but ex dive kick is also just really strong. Ix dive kick is really good, and it's like a really good anti-throw option as well. And get, always getting punish counter is ham. She's trying to be different. She's trying to be nicer now, so I think she's trying to assassinate everybody. However, Luke on the other hand, he's like, you know what? You build a ton of meter. You usually build two bars around. It's very typical in this game. Now you're just gonna burn him out. Yep. Perfectly, perfectly done from Kawano. Immediately puts him in, in uh, burnout, and then just says, "Cool, I'll take this stun. Counter hit. Dead. Right there is you empty jump into throw a lot of the times or empty jump into low. I'm sorry. You empty jump into low and maybe Akira Oh nice, wow. That, and so he tried Good defense from that's Akira, that's hard to do. Dude! Yeah. Man, I'm really impressed. That is hard to do, man. It is really difficult to anti air like this. That was truly the tactic that Akira was going for, right? Kawano two steps ahead again. Exactly. Yeah, empty jump and meaty it, or hit a button is really hard to do or is really smart because it beats so many. Oh, this is a side swap dash uppercut. Oh, he missed. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a he gets like a dashing side swap uppercut situation. He's dead. Oh, he didn't do the jump medium punch knuckle. It does a little bit more damage, right? But I think it doesn't matter. And that's gonna do it. Kawano moves on. Kawano's a beast, man. Ah, but spirit of familiarity. But you know, I honestly do think. Now, Min versus uh, Jackie. You know, the interesting thing about this is that uh, what's it called? Oh no. This this top eight is like so stacked. There's Evo winners. There's Capcom Cup winners. There's like so many absurdly good fighting game players in this top eight. Oh, that was cheap as fuck. Send help! Okay, never mind. Never mind. I feel like I'm gonna accomplish some murder or something. What just happened? Yeah, now I'm in one Evo Japan with Sakura. You guys may remember. Level two. Yeah. He burns himself out, activates that level two, and Joshi taking round number one in emphatic fashion. Who hurt you? <laughs> Who hurt you? I mean, this, this definitely shows that he trains with Kakeru a lot, so he's got the JP tech on deck. I think the cheapest thing about this character, JP, is the newest thing that everybody's done, the level two stuff. Basically, every single time you have JP has level two, and you have less than, like, I don't know. If you have three bars of drive gauge, he just burns you out. Like with level two. I think his level two is way, way, way more messed up than so much of the stuff that he's done throughout this game's lifespan, honestly. Oh, no. 
I don't think that was a bad that is so annoying to deal with when you're in burnout. The crouching medium kicks that are just fluff. I mean, he's gonna string him up, jump. Oh, oh. <laughs> Help! He's just doing jump, overhead low, plus the clone situation. You're like, yep. Yeah, the level 2 stuff is really, really good. It's like the best thing the character's done since he's come out, I think. It's really good. Because basically, he can just force burnout from very low amounts. That was sick, too. He can force burnouts from very low amounts of drive gauge. Look at the, this. Is, look at this bait. He sets up the portal and then does drive rush with jab to bait the parry and then takes the punish counter throw. They are really good at that. Like... Yeah, they're really, really, really good at that. In Japan, in particular, baiting parries is like their specialty. Oh, no combo. No combo. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something messed up with JP's level 2. I don't think it should be doing as much drive gauge damage as it's doing. I don't think it's in, probably supposed to... Like, look at his drive gauge here, right? Okay, he parries. But if you do a string into the level 2... Basically, like, you can burn someone out from, like, three or four bars of drive gauge with, with his level 2, which I think it's supposed to be really powerful, but I don't think it's supposed to be doing that much drive gauge damage. And I think it's doing too much on accident, probably. But it's really powerful, and it's, like, such a huge win condition. Nice. That was really smart. It's such a huge uh, win condition for the character because as soon as he has level 2, and you build a level 2 every round, right? I mean, you guys have seen Rashid. Like, you build a level 2 every round, and when you build a level 2, you can basically immediately force burnout from, like, huge amounts of drive gauge, which is extremely powerful. This is the second time he's done that during the set, by the way, where he, like, sets a portal on top of you and waits until right before the portal is about to explode to jump so that you can't really, like, DP anti him very easily, right? Oh, wrong, wrong button. It's supposed to be crouching heavy punch. Anti-air, yeah. Nice. That was a sneaky drive impact. He did crouching heavy, fake ghost into DI. And Nauman was just whiffing light kick him ready. Burnout. The damage is pretty significant. The burnout, even more so while facing the corner. Nauman. We're watching this tournament was this weekend, but this is the first time I've been home to stream since it's uh, it happened. No ex amnesia. <laughs> time to die, asshole. No amnesia. I like that. I like that ex fireball. It's very good. Because if he does wake up level one there, it loses to it, and level two is not invuln, so pretty good option. Tatsumak. Oh, that was yeah, great spot for Nauman. He did meaty fireball there to beat the Amnesia. Oh, nice. Wow. He actually got that full confirm off jab jab there. I guess that must be auto timed, right? If you do Amnesia jab jab, then that probably is like a pretty consistent way to get that combo. That's cool. Wow! That's the first time I've seen that jump media punch get stuffed out. <laughs> right? Like I'm in Japan recording this live, yeah, from three days ago. Uh -huh. Let's go, Ken Roundhouse. <laughs> Probably one of the best things about the EX goes is that it sets up portal. If you want to like just get space, it's really good. You just throw EX portal or throw EX goes and then you can do it. Or conversely, oh, he's not gonna kill though, right? Oh, that was a reset. Cheeky. I think his portal is a cool move. It, I think EX portal is probably too strong, but I don't really mind the portal being strong. Honestly, I think most of the stuff that JP does is very cool. Like, I don't, I don't really like. He's a little too strong, sure, but I think most of the stuff he does is cool. Like, we all know he's too good, but. Like, I think the ways he should be fixed are probably not portal being cool or like certain moves being cool. It's just like, or strong. It's just like how effective he is at like burning you out with his level two and like how, oh, that was probably an accident. Like amnesia is probably too good, right? Like if his defense was weaker, I think it would be much easier to tolerate him. 
What is this? Confirmed, dude. That was sick. Over Mola fans. That combo was really cool. Nice. That's all he was waiting for. He was just waiting for the drive rush the whole time. What a splunky gamer. I'm so radicalized. I don't even want JP level 1 to be in. I think a lot of people don't want Amnesia to be as good as it is, right? Like, I think... I think the character's defense being weak would make up for a lot of the other strengths he has, but I mean they'll do whatever to him. Like he's gonna get nerfed, right? Like I mean I don't know. I don't care. We all know we all know the character is good. We've known the character is good for so long that what they do to him is they they know he's gonna get smoked. Do command grabs trigger amnesia? Yeah, grabs grabs will trigger it. Nice. This spot is quite good for now, man. Joshi was sitting with two bars right there, so he has the ability to escape with level one. Very similar situation as Oh, he did it. Oh my dude. Oh no. Oh, he dropped it. Man, if he wins this round, okay, okay, okay. There we go. There we go. On the board for Nauman now. Bro, he was amnesiaing for his life. You go up 2-0 and then the opponent rattles off. Three games in a row. Let's see if that of Nauman can actually pull that. Oh, that was level two. That sucks. Real ambitious is what that is. Yeah. No, he's trying to level two. Anytime a JP player does like jab jab portal or something like that, they're trying to level two. I mean, if you ever watched a Brian F stream, you know that jab jab into portal is level two, and then he's just mad. <laughs> he's like, no man, I try to level two, and we're like, yeah. Oh, sne sneaky. That was a rough spot. Nice. 3-0. Well played. JP got me reading for a Ken player. Not top five Ken, they say. Honestly, even if I thought Ken wasn't top five, I would say he's top five just because I can't let Ken players get away with it. Like, I'm sick of them pretending that they thought that he wasn't top five before, and like now, like, oh, he's not top five. This is, not, this is nonsense. Don't listen to The problem is, oh, that's, we'll take that trade, I guess. Wow, he had plus frames after the trade there, by the way. Oh, I think he... Oh, Tokido tried to bait him. Isn't this cool? He does parry here to pretend like he's gonna drive rush i think so that he'll wake up level one i like that <laughs> yeah this this ken outfit i don't like it either but daigo and tokido have been playing it so i've seen it a lot so let's see if he can keep it up tried to perfect carry the dragon last was just a little too early Again, two frame window for this combo off of it dude his standing leg kick goes so far did you see that also somebody asked earlier do ken players hit confirm standing leg kick counter hit to, to or standing jab uh counter hit the standing leg kick like are they doing it preemptively or and the answer is oh my god he just killed him the answer is that what you do is you do standing jab into standing leg kick, and then if you see it say is counter hit, then you confirm. Like you're just doing standing jab into standing leg kick, but uh, you only cancel into DP if you see counter hit, and then you do it. Basically. But they're just gonna do the leg kick at no matter what. Right, exactly. Because I mean, he's hitting you. You're not like seeing it say counter hit, then deciding to hit light kick. Like, you're just gonna do the light kick anyway. But good sequence here from KB. Oh, he got him. Did you guys know KB is Bombabon, by the way? Dude, you throw JP three times in a row. Do you not fear death? Okay. Oh, terrible combo. Oh my god. He had enough. He had enough. Oh boy, Tokido dropping the combo. Not like this, Tokido. Not like this. Okay, kill him. Tokido, you stink. P you. What are these combos, man? I blame his last gym session. Maybe he's a little bit sore. What are these combos? What's happening? 
all the way ready. Definitely saw uh, trying to make Big Bird jealous, showing nice. his uh, gym equipment in his home, in, in his room. Though. Yeah. <laughs> he was gonna level two on block oh, there. Yep. Goes for the level three. He should level three here because he gets the threatened burnout. He's so close to burnout, so why not? He's distracted by the costume. Tokido is. He doesn't even, honestly, this damage is nice, but if you're Tokido, really, you don't even care if he blocks it. It's actually kind of, it would have been, or uh, if he could take, it would have been better if he got, he blocked it so that you got the burnout. Like him getting hit is like not as good for you. Yeah, I feel like Tokido's combos on this game, he drops everything. I don't know what happens. Oh, this this war is really... Oh, he tried to early amnesia to beat a button. That was a little greedy. The amnesia, but maybe he was just thinking of a dry rush normal. The dragon last startup was slow enough to actually get past the active window. From yeah, I think oh, like so when you're close to getting burnt, you have to decide if getting burnt out is more likely to lose you the round than getting hit by some random poke or hit. And generally, I think the burnout is worse. What a snipe on the jump back. That was dope. Where are you going? I like the fake spike that he did there too, the closer one. Bah. Yeah. Big swing and drive gauge there, by the way. Like that immediately causes such a problem for Tokyo. He had such a good spot. Ooh. Swinging with perfect parry on defense there. If you're Tokido, you notice that and then you just delay your pressure or walk up throw. Nice reaction. Dude, he's done that like two or three times already. Level two. This is auto burnout. Yeah, now this round for Tokido, your win odds are so miserable. Because, like, every time you block a portal, it's, like, huge chip. And then this string, like, yeah, it's hard to poke. It's hard to gain space. It's hard not to uh, not to get chipped. Yep, it forces him on that. So, so brutal, right? Yeah, Bombabon played Dragon Ball and also played uh, Strive. Played Soul. Drive. Or anything like that, but kind of, you know, just walking back essentially. Nice, oh, that was sneaky. Tokido just like waiting, right? He's waiting for a jump, waiting for an approach. Good reaction to him from him to parry there. Like, he parried on wake up here, and then he sees, like, oh, he's not hitting me, and he canceled it in a drive rush. I like that. Right now, at least in this top eight. Man, his perfect parry timing on these reversals has been so good. He also is going to force level 2 on block pretty soon here too, so which is bad for Tokido. Like basically, Tokido can't really spend drive gauge here because he's going to make him block. Oh, that was level 2 right there. He was going to make him block into level 2 and then burn him out. So Tokido had to make something happen there. Now you just do Fireball or EX DP. Yeah, EX Fireball is good. EX Fireball or Sandy Heavy Bunch. Okay. All right, all right. Calm down there, buddy. But Tokido with the patience and Tokido at match point. Nice whip punish. Mm -hmm. You see neutral jump, delayed throw. He's trying to bait out um, Amnesia or Perfect Parry. Same thing again. This time KB text. Definitely a skin, that's, for sure. that's why he's neutral jump, empty jumping. Oh, punish. Level two. Look at how much drive gauge you lose here, by the way. We've seen so many situations where JB can get two level twos in the same round, and he's going for the burnout here off of uh, for Tokido. Uh oh. Level one. Here we go. Look at this. More pressure. But Tokido just wake up, jumps right out of the corner. Oh, nice. Is the spike going to hit him? I thought it might. Oh, nice bait. Oh, my fucking. He woke up crouching medium kick. Nice. I think that that's it. He loses. Yeah, there's no way out of that. There's, there's no spot to win. What a fucking scramble. Do you see this? Tokido has like three and a half, and he takes him down to auto, just takes him down to like half of one. And Tokido knows he's going to get burnt, so he's trying to jump and avoid getting hit. That would have burned him out on block, so he jumps again. He just escapes. And then this right here is huge level one reaction to the drive rush. He does fake ghosts. Tokido parries the fake ghost so he doesn't get burnt out, and then boom, he just takes his legs out. <laughs> and then Tokido wakes up button, he's like, fuck it. I'm already burnt, I gotta get out of here. That that fake ghost to get the burnout was really good, and this checkmate. 
I don't think there's anything you can do about that. Because his level one is not projectile invuln, his level two is not invuln. So he has no invincible move to escape. I like. I don't think there's anything Tokido can do to escape there. I, th I think that's just checkmate. I don't think most characters have an option they can do, honestly, but especially in Burnout with no invincible supers. Yeah, takes the drive gauge. Good combo choice. Yeah, I mean, that round was just like, it was both of them scrambling and making hard decisions back to back to back, which is cool. Probably better off just blocking at this point. We just witnessed a murder and you say nice. I mean, it was it was nice. Like, I, well, I don't know. It was a good round. Like, it was nice. A lot of good. It's like nine decisions that they made that they're forced to make that are cool. He kills with no bar here, or he spends a bar. <laughs> he could have done medium ghost heavy spike, I think. But you know, I'm not playing the video game, so I get to stare at the live bars. Yeah, if you're in tournament, you know, you spend the meter because you're not sure. I'm not in tournament. I'm chilling. So I get to look at the light bars and be like, what is he doing? All right, cool. Oh, nice bait. Level one. Yeah, he wants to take as much drive gauge as he can. Oh. Yeah, Tokido's fucked. This round is. He's going to drive and fight again. This round's GG. I don't I don't think this is a winnable round for Tokido very easily. Like it's very hard to win this. Like if I had to EV this, like I this is like 85% win chance for KB. Like Okay. Now maybe a little bit more winnable, but it's still pretty bad. Uh-oh. Uh oh. What a Blighthouse. He didn't really do much while he was in Burnout. I think he was too scared of Tokido sending it with like Run DP or something. Okay, well. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah. The problem though is that Tokido wins a round. That was sick. But he has like no bar for this last round. Only one meter. Which is a big deal. Like, oh, nice back dash. dash. Yeah, on jab like that, characters are going to be minus. So. <laughs> back dash, good choice. Like, this is a hard round to win for Tokido because of the meter deficit. Like, if he gets hit, he's just going to get level 3 in, and he has no way to recover the drive gauge in the same way. So, if you ever go into the last round and your opponent has 3 bars and you don't, it's already like 65% chance your opponent is winning the round, probably. Like they, they just have such a, a massive resource advantage. Although he hasn't spent any drive or any super gauge so far, but he can just level two on block. And like, it's bad for you now too. Yeah, I mean, yep. Not not much to do. Like he just shut all the doors. There was no approach option that was good for Tokido. Without having your own level three, you don't have a way to strip their drive gauge in the last round and then force them off their meter or force them to like have to defend with low drive gauge and make bad choices because when you have low drive gauge like you know your decision making has to be a little worse because you have to make things happen or you'll die yeah that drive rush not giving him offense is really yeah Tokido spot here looks tough Nice. Okay, big chance now. Was there a trade combo possible there, I wonder? Oh, I wonder if he meant to do that. Nice. Yeah, now he's burnt. This spot is so tough. Ugh. Portal's going to come out. And now he can level 2. If he wants to be really safe, he just does level 2 on block. Yeah, I think Tokido is just waiting for that. Yes, sir. Mix up time. Yeah, I mean, what do you want him to do? He's just a human being. He's simply a human being. He wasn't able to catch the drive rush this time. It's KB with the big opener. I like that. I like drive rush spike. Uh, that's pretty smart. Like the departure spike. 
Oh, wow. oh, he went for throw there. I think expecting Tokido to parry on the whiff. Oh, no. Wrong button. Try to check with crouching medium punch there, but it was just a fireball. Uh-oh. Sure you can. Nice. I like that that time he actually did the jumping heavy punch. Because the last two times in the corner, he didn't. He just empty jumped and then went for throw. Yeah. If you're Tokido, you shouldn't spend any meter here. Your, your spot's too good. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, if you're Tokido, you also are totally fine with him level 1-ing here. Like, let's say KB decides to do wake up level 1 to try to beat this. Then JP loses the bar, and then the chances of him not being able to... Like, the chances of him being able to zone Tokido when Tokido has drive gauge and he doesn't is so low that, like, even if he level 1's here... Like, it's actually probably a win for you because it means he has less meter for the last round. Have any offensive DIs worked that set? Uh, there was one. There was one, I think, against Tokido. Oh, wow. He did dash parry trying to see if he was going to check him. Now he's now Tokido's drive gauge is too low. Oh no combo! Oh my god! Oh he missed it. KB should level two here as soon as he gets a chance. Oh level two chance? Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. He just burns him out here. No. Why did he do that? I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. It was probably a plan. Oh, this is a very winnable spot for Tokido now, though. Punish. Yeah, he's, he should be able to kill. Not enough. I think he could have killed with a different combo, right? But I mean, oh, he's gonna chip him. Oh shit. Oh, he's pumping the amnesia. Oh my hell. He's gonna run DB. Oh, it's so hard to stop. He's pumping the amnesia to try to get out of there. This combo here, I think if he starts with... If he starts with not crouching medium kick, he probably kills him, right? Because crouching medium kick scales the combo. But, I mean, how do you remember that in the heat of the moment, right? I don't even know if it would have... That's a lot of life. But I think I think crouching medium punch might have made the difference. Oh, we get to see the Kim? He switched from JP to Kim. Is this matchup even better? I don't... I have no idea. I mean, I know a lot of JP players, they probably don't want to fight Kami compared to some of the other cast, but like... I don't know. Kimberly must be the choice for this matchup because of that. But I don't even know if it's better. Nice. Little drivers confirm. Crouching jab, standing, uh, or crouching heavy punch. Damn! What the fuck? You just knew? Oh, I say Kim. I meant Kim. Kim Cam, Cam, Ken Burley. Yeah, and remember when we saw the last time when Akira was playing on the winner side, he just wouldn't stop. He and getting an auto side switch like that is so handy. It's so nice to have. That was one of my favorite parts about playing Cammy. It's really nice to just be able to meterlessly side swap like that. That kind of combo utility is like a really nice thing to have in general. Oh my, you are you just got it like that? You just kill off this. Oh, you missed the combo. Oh my, yeah. all right, my bad. I was not familiar with your game. But Josh, you clearly not comfortable with going, uh, that was beast. Everything about that was beast. My my fault. Again, remember we saw Kazunoko doing that as well, checking every run cancel from um, Arc step. Yeah, yeah. That actually gives you a better uh, Oki than just doing run slide. I think actually. I think it's also more damage from my memory. Nice block. Man, he has approached with, like, teleport 90% of these interactions, it feels like. Dead. Yeah, he gets the EX Azuna afterwards and whatever combo he wants to do, too. The problem, though, is he has no cans. He's playing both cans in the first round to win on offense. So you don't get the reload. And a lot of the times, the reload on offense is uh, not plus. Like, it's sometimes it's zero. Well, that's tricky. Here we go, pressure in the corner. Nice, he did a run stop. 
Yeah, one of the things that Josh has got to be careful of right now, Akira's definitely going for the mm -hmm. uh, jab check. Level three. He's gonna get Easy peasy. What about Zozo? Remember yesterday we talked about how Kim can frame trap you with the run slide. I if she, she doesn't have to do that though. Like, if you want to frame trap with Kimberly, or you want to like, you you just do spacing traps. Like, you don't have to do standing medium kick run into slide if you want to beat people mashing jab. You just oh, we got him. You just do stand medium kick nothing, and then you let them check, and then you hit standing medium kick again, or like heavy punch or something. Yeah, he's he's gonna be stuck here. I don't. Th yeah, I don't know how you escaped there. That was a really good walk forward by Akira, though. That was good. Oh, he wanted a can. That was like the one time he threw a can. Wow. I like the di there. First knockdown DI like that is like often very hard to to stop because you're just not ready. Oh, he's dead. He is so dead. That's 2 0. He's going to JP. This makes sense. Two games down, already two games down. Jesus. Damn word, that's how you start the match. He's like, alright. There's some of the reasons why a lot of people think Cammy can fight JP really well is because of that spin knuckle. Oh my! I I for sure thought that shot. I think was uh, generally. Oh my God! That beat no, EXDP. Okay, my bad, my fault. A little too far for it to hit. Oh. He could just cancel it though. <laughs> Josh is really making it hurt, and you see the huge difference in demeanor. Damage output, but again, Akira is just—he's so active. Like I feel like if he stands still, he, 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 he's gonna Go. explode. You know, like I think the DP was just too far. Buzz, I think the invul frames are in the beginning, right? So that's why the projectile one. <laughs> yeah, when you reload the cans with uh, uh, Kim, if you do EX, it reloads both. He slowed down for one bit and the bomb came out. <laughs> you just do the can input again Man, with one punch or two out. punches to do it. Level two. Nice. Parry jump forward there was a really good escape. Basically no damage nice DP. Not having to take any drive gauge there. Oh, he just kills him. Level one. Good choice. You'll definitely build another bar the next round, so you build about two round bars around, so spending one is never really that bad. Joshi out of the tournament. And building himself back to three bars. Immediate drive reversal from Joshi. Yeah, that's a, that's one of those uh three versus two spends. You see that drive thrust cancel, you go for the drive reversal and you come out one bar on top. Oh, her jab check didn't quite reach. That jumping medium punch oh man far, but oh man oh wow i think he tried amnesia right i don't think that sweep was on purpose also cammy got really unlucky there that her neutral jump didn't didn't catch like could have done it slightly higher right oh empty jump throw to beat parry there all right fair enough yeah i mean the the plan was to just burn out cammy on block there so level 30 makes a lot of sense Oh, nice. That's it. Did you see that little micro walk backwards? Man, her, she just took a little step back and then the pushback after the first crouching medium punch made it with. Why is Daigo falling off in this game? He gets 13th in a 900 person bracket, like the hardest bracket since Evo, and he's fallen off. That shit is brutal. Imagine being Daigo. Getting 13th after losing round one, getting 13th in like one of the hardest brackets for the game. Probably it's like top five most difficult bracket in the game's lifespan, and that's falling off. Like, that shit's rough. I wish I was falling off. Yeah, so obviously, you know, the reason is because Dive is one of the most powerful. Shit, I didn't know that. And then how could it be falling off? Cammy is kind of really the main dive kick character of this game. That's how it goes. I know, Kazunoko Tokido and loses bracket is wild. 
Honestly, I'm kind of sad that Cause didn't win when I saw him in Winterside. And the reason I say that is because his team, he was carrying them in SFL. I don't know if you guys watched SFL much. Kazunoko was carrying their sorry asses. I don't know how else to put it. He, like, honestly, he was the hardest working man in Street Fighter League. Straight up. And, like, the fact that he, his team was just carrying... <laughs> They were the heaviest team of all time. Kazunoko was fighting for his fucking life, okay? That's straight up the truth. And if you watched it, you know what I'm saying is true. Like, Goichi was trying, but I can't lie. Dogra, I don't know if he won a set. <laughs> like, Benrich, he was trying. Goichi was good, but Kazunoko was carrying their sorry asses. I don't know if Dogra won a set. I love Dogra, but every time I tuned in... It said zero to two to Dogra's op opponent. What up, Izzy? Thanks for the prime. Kazunoko was carrying them, dude. He was working so hard. So I kind of wanted him to win because I, after watching him struggle that whole Street Fighter League with his teams like on his back. Oh my god. You know, that is a classic Kazunoko thing to do. <laughs> yeah, the teams were truly Kazunoko just working his ass off to carry everybody. He's fighting for his life, man. Also, I think it was Brutus said earlier that Tokido hits any light kick like it owes him money. Like that button is just the fucking best. Like it, it that button is so good. Like honestly, Ken's lights are so wild. His steady light kick is incredible. I like cannot believe how good of a punish move it is. When you have that move and you go to other characters, you like forget how good Ken's steady light kick is because it's extremely far, extremely fast. It's like one of the best far range punishers in the game and it has really consistent cancel options that are really good. So, like, it's one of those moves that, like, yeah, when you play other characters, you get jealous of it. You're just like, man. Yeah, I mean, it kind of does have that Sakura from from Street Fighter V vibe, where you just have like have this long range, fast normal that you can just buffer or just like check people with. His standing jabs too, like his standing jab is so incredible. You only notice how good Ken's jab is when you fight someone who is good. You know, getting these little punish counter pokes, but also those drive rush jabs and the drive rush fierces and then ah, but burns himself out. So that is a little risky, but there you go. Nice. That was a good that was a good sneaky little dive kick there from Kazunoko. Trade and then he still gets to threaten because the burnout's there. Oh, I did like Tokido challenging after that medium drag. Oh, I didn't take the juggle. Zero on block on burnout, if I'm not mistaken. Big dead. Honestly, the fact that Tokido didn't do any drive rushes there scared me a little bit, but I'll take it. Second time now. Kazunoko's had more of his ODDPs red in this top 16 than I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, Ken's jab is definitely esports. Incredibly esports. I think the only person who has succumbed to... And is like it. I saw some of the matches live, but not all of them, no. Yeah, that's an easy PC reaction. And because he's in burnout now, you can freeze the timer. Yeah, so Tokido's now full drive gauge, basically. Kazunoko is burnout with a fresh timer. Oh, nice buffer. Oh man, he was so oh fucked there. Burns out, you block heavy kick from that far. All he wants to do is take a step. It doesn't matter. That is brutal. That was right at the What up, Lord? Because Tokido was going to jump fierce into fierce DP. He was going to go right into fast DP and burn him out. So Kazunoko's like, I got to do something, but it's the safe jump. None of my supers are going to Oh, no combo. Anyway, and so he just yeah, was that was checkmate. Oh, oh man, the like second that. hit. Uh -huh. oh. Nice, oh, man. He is looking real good. That, that's the way Ken plays, right? He kind of boxes you in in the corner. He doesn't even need plus moves to make his corner pressure really scary. He just has lots of minus moves that he can stagger off of or do something else, like medium heavy or 
first hit of Jinrai into nothing, or you know what I mean? Like he just has a lot of stuff like that. Then like a walk back, heavy punch, like heavy punch, or delay, heavy punch, delay. You know, that kind of stuff is all good. Oh shit. Oh, he got a combo of it, but he did standing jab, not crouching. Side swap. Your finish. Oh no. Yeah. I mean, you know that Tokido got counter hit because he was trying to. He's trying to swing because he wanted to get out of there. He didn't want to be burnt. Yeah, I mean, anybody can hit master in the game if you. You grind and you have experience in other fighting games. You got this. to the draw, drive rush forward into that stand jab. Has caught Costco multiple times now. It's hard to deal with for sure. Oh, I wonder if that was another stand light kick buffer and the stand light kick just got eaten. Ken might be better than Ryu in this game. Ending Walker qualified with Ryu. I don't know if you guys saw. We'll be seeing Ryu in Capcom Cup. Spent a lot of meter taking him over here, so doesn't really have as much in the tank to keep the pressure up, which is why you saw him back off and took you imagine to get that crouching medium kick now. Not plus, by the way. Ooh. Oh, those are the worst kind of DIs to just get hit by. Just like the out of nowhere, no reason, just bop, tap, go. And you're just like, no. Oh, no way. No way. Oh my god. Kazunoko with enough endurance from that drive impact to blow through the That's a rough way to go. Because it hits twice. Impact blowing up that ODDP and Kazunoko goes up two to one. Kazunoko is a beast, man. He's so good. Yeah, Ken's face, I know, right? Kazunoko is getting really significant rounds being up two to one in this type of set against Tokido. And you saw that Kazunoko tried to adjust to the drive rush jabs at the start of the round. With medium and punches too. Yeah, and yeah. Nice. I like that combo choice, honestly. Punish counter heavy bunch into the drill side swap seems like really good. Because you get the normal side swap that you want, but like you don't have to uh, rely on the tar combo whiffing up close or whatever. Seems pretty good. Man, Kazunoko is steamrolling now. He's chilling. Remember, Tokido has said no Tokido, no Capcom. Daigo had said that. Daigo said that? Okay. Daigo had said that. Could you imagine, though? Like, I mean, we're at the point in this where there's only two people from Japan making it in to the event. You're just like, all right, man. Like, I, you know, we got two people from Japan making it to Capcom Cup, and Daigo's out at 13. Kazunoko and Tokido are fighting in top eight losers. Like, it's brutal. And this region is so hard. And, like, not only that, but, like, you know, Fudo won the first slot in World Warrior. And Gotchkun won Seam, or, or, like, you know, the Singapore Premier. So he qualifies that way. So you even have the extra slot from Gotchkun. But, oh, no. What up, Kester did? Kazunoko played Kami in the last game, also. He's burnout. And now Chip. Yeah, I mean, it's... What are you going to do if you're Tokido? You're just chipped if Kazunoko does a button there. Imagine that. Here we go. Winners finals. No matter what, it's going to be a loot player. Winners finals. I wonder why he punishes with back heavy punch. I guess... I guess for drive gauge, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like, you do back heavy punch into this, and then you don't have to spend uh, three drive gauges. You spend one. Instead of doing heavy punch... Or like back heavy kick into heavy punch. Is it better though to do uh, what's it called? Is it better to do um, back heavy kick drive rush crouching medium crouching heavy into the combo? I, I don't know. I don't honestly, I think the other one makes sense. Yeah, I mean the thing about this matchup, this match is so so slow. And the reason is that Luke has really good fireballs, he has really good anti-air, and he has... Oh, that's a punish. Bad punish, though, sadly. Um, he has one of the best anti-drive rush checks in the game, which is Crouching Medium Punch. So, like, yeah, it's bad. It is, it is hard to approach here. 
And these two are both really just chilling, right? Like they're both just like walking back and forth. If drive rush is weak and you don't have a way to approach really well, because like Luke has such a good anti drive rush button, then it is really hard to get going. Can you wanna? Do you guys know why this happened? This this right here. Do you know what this was right here? Does that look weird to you at all? This is something they do in Japan a lot and is a very common option at high levels of plays. Standing heavy punch into drive rush is safe to reversal DP. So you know how when someone does a drive rush, you can mash DP and if they do something that's not a true block string, then your DP will beat it, right? This is a really common option. So if someone does crouching medium kick drive rush into like a heavy and you mash DP, if it's a true block string, your DP won't come out. If it's not a true block string, then your DP will come out. So stand heavy bunch in a drive rush like this into nothing is to bait Kawano doing reversal DP. So instead, he sees that it's a heavy and he just reversal checks with crouching medium punch or crouching jab. That's why he did that. It's because the standing heavy bunch drive rush into nothing is to bait DP. He's gonna build level one. Well, right at the end, he didn't even need it though. Jeez. Yeah, drive rush back heavy kick is a weird thing to punish all DPs with all the time. Yeah, it's it's generally a very good punish for Luke, but you can do raw back heavy kick and then do drive rush into crouching medium, crouching heavy. That works. I mean, he can't blame him for that. Honestly, he might have just been scared he was actually minus in that situation. Yes, yes, not yes. sure. Oh, yeah. Nice. I like crouching heavy, actually, there at that angle. Because DP is... You don't want to autocorrect and then lose the corner. That would have sucked. Oh, you might be dead. Oh, you're dead. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. That's, a hard, that's a hard length, man. Is he? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think he's dead. <laughs> Oh, nice check. That was a good choice on the button. I think crouching medium punch was not the right check. Sandy medium kick looked better at that angle. It's me, dude. I every time I'm here, I ruin everybody's record on that. I I I curse everything. Wow, a lot of these long drive rushes and the delayed throws we've been seeing from. They're trying to beat parries. They're they're doing drive rush to bait parry, right? What up, Doctor Munin? Thanks for the prime. This match is neutral. If you hate drive rush, if you hate people just playing neutral, or if you hate people just swinging, if you want neutral, these motherfuckers are playing neutral. They are just sitting there in neutral, like walking back and forth, doing a whole lot of nothing for like 90% of this, you know, match. Like this is the corner, so this is offense and stuff, right? But a lot of this is just these two dudes walking back and forth, throwing fireball, just like, what's up? Very confident. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's, it's, it's a lot. A lot of this matches that. It's like, I mean, it's because Luke has such a good anti drive rush check with crouching medium punch that, and his fireball, that a lot of it is like, you just walk back and forth. Nice check. It's scared to swing preemptively against Luke because you just, you just hit medium punch. Wow, that was a cool punish. I don't think I've seen that before. Oh, a side switch right there for Kawano. Oh, too, like far, that. too far. That was a really good punish. Stand light kick. What's it called? Stand light kick, drive rush on punish counter into crouching medium punch. That was a good little optimization. Pretty good spot there now. Kawano has a huge meter advantage, so. Oh. And he's gonna go right into the level three. So off of the crouching medium kick at least will add some scaling to the combo. Yeah, perfect berry on sandblast is a very important skill to learn though, because you can actually punish it if you're close enough to drive rush. And sandblast is really, really, really cheap if you don't perfect parry it because he just gains free plus frames and like he just yeah, he just gets to control neutral so much better. Oh, that was a mistake. Kawano needed to... He should just drive impact him. Yeah, he doesn't have an escape there. He, um... What's it called? 
Kawana wanted to burn him out, and he accidentally didn't do something tight to, to burn him out. Uh -oh. Well, two? No, just, it just he walks back. He's scared because his drive gauge is so low, I think. Yeah. I, th I think the fear there of like, oh no, my drive gauge is so low, I gotta be careful, is why he walked back. The Luke mirror, part of why it's so slow, is that Luke has really good anti-drive rush checks, and his fireball is good at, at beating drive rush just like on accident. His pokes are very good for keep out. And like Luke's drive rush himself, it's like good, but it's not the best. So the ways of approaching in the matchup are like, a, it's hard. It's hard to just force your way in with drive rush or dash or whatever. Like Luke just, he walls himself out. You know what I mean? Like he just, they just slow, it naturally slows the, himself down. So it's just sandblast and crouching medium and sandblast and crouching medium and sandblast. Like it's a very slow, just like, yeah. Like all the hits are like crouching medium punch or crouching medium kick on block drive rush. And then every time you walk past sandblast range into like, okay, we can use our low poke range. That's where like crouching medium punch or crouching medium kick becomes a threat. And like, if you're walking back to try to bait their button, then you're susceptible to crouching medium kick and then you start dancing, you know? Oh, punish. He misconfirmed. He, he thought it hit. This target combo, you can hit confirm. So when he does that target combo, it's usually because he thinks it hits. So he tried to confirm it and he just missed the confirm. That's why he did it. Yeah, drive rush back heavy punch with Luke is really good too. It's like a mini DJ sway. Gives you so much corner carry too. Luke's corner carry is so good. It's man, he re he takes you so far. Wow, word. My bad. My my fault for jumping back in the middle of the screen from the corner. Alt level one, nice. Perfect confirm. That's a tough one to see. Like I, your mind will probably make you do light knuckle a lot of times, but level one super is the right confirm there. Uh, a lot of people stop playing modern in general, honestly. Like even like people like Shudo or like Itabashi or playing modern Marisha, Mar Marissa. I've switched back to classic a lot of times. <laughs> but thankfully it was just an uppercut. It could have been far worse. Right? Kawano was uh, ready for the approach rather than just waiting for something to happen and, and punching on the way down, which is way better. A lot of people have switched, yeah. Look at the neutral that these guys are playing. Neither of them wants to A lot of people are back on, on classic. Very, very I'm not really sure what made them made the switch. Maybe they think the advantages aren't as important as they once thought and how the meta is with the game now. I'm not sure. See, they're trying to stay outside of each other's crouching medium kick range. Oh, what a reaction! Didn't I see Tachikawa playing modern Luke in this tournament? I thought he did. Or maybe, I don't remember, honestly. Anticipating the perfect punish, or sorry, the perfect parry into the drive goes forward. That's usually what you want to do against some of these sand guys within certain ranges. You can punish that with perfect carry. Shudo, I've seen playing both, yeah. But lately, I've seen I've seen him on classic quite a bit, yeah. That was probably a fireball miss. It happens. Yeah, I mean, look at how slow this round is. This is what the character is like. Probably got harassed into switching. They would only play classic if they think it's better. For them, it would make more sense. I mean, yeah, there's no time. You can't, can't win anymore. Kawano just gonna run away. Why spend the meter with five seconds left to guarantee the win? Get into that grand finals. 
I don't honestly I don't mind the super though because it, it basically guarantees that he has the life to win like he doesn't need to oh he doesn't need to do anything after that super hits he's like basically guaranteed it does freeze the clock but I, I think he's just like happy to guarantee it do it again off the wall, one more. He yes, even, doesn't even need to spend any of that super gauge. So he's coming in here with. And last round, the super meter is basically the same anyway. Like Kawana's about to have three anyway. That was a big chance of the round start that Otani missed, by the way. Oh, I'm surprised he level three. I guess like he loses a lot of damage here, but you do gain the drive gauge lead. He can just standing heavy punch, drive rush, heavy punch, or something. Yeah, I mean now burnout is a big threat. Oh, oh boy. Right back at him. nice confirm. That doesn't knock combo on regular hit, by the way. Crouching medium punch into heavy knuckle. And just like that, he's tied in hell. Oh, try to bait out something. Parry. Counter hit. That's big. No, he doesn't even matter. Oh, Kawano said, yo. Oh, that's a big miss. Early, perhaps. I don't know. I still don't. Yeah, still that spot was so good for Otani. Because even like if Kawano wakes up DP there and he burns himself out, then Otani like has the life lead and he's in a, a good spot still. And you don't really get pressure if you wake up EXDP and then you burn yourself out. Like you don't, you have no drive rush to get in, right? So. It was looking like it was gonna be all Kawano for a second there, but Otani, nice finish in game number. Yeah, he was gonna be in burnout real quick there. The best of one now. Oh, uh -oh. that was such a late DP. You normally cannot block in time. In that I'm surprised he threw. I think throwing him was a mistake there. I think he's supposed to just hit heavy punch, right? Well, because he could have just done heavy punch and burnt him out. I think throw is, is surprising to me. Oh my. Did you see that? Did you see him just throw that? Like he did that like it was the most normal thing he's ever done in his life. He is so much better than me. Nice. Oh no! That's so unfortunate. And then level one. Oh, level two. That's uh, the back dash was sick, but his crouching heavy punch just didn't have enough range. Kawano, I mean, sorry, Otani. A little bit too far out, a little overzealous, but trying to get the maximum punish, right? Get a punish counter, punish right. counter, crouch jab. You can link it into crouch heavy punch, but it's only so point shallow, blank range, right? Yeah. Just... Has to be point blank for that. Yeah. So, yeah, like you said, Otani got a little greedy in that. Situation. I mean, the tackle and the throw is fine. The reason I wanted him to do a button is because Kawano was on like a pixel of drive gauge. So, like, doing heavy punch into fireball, like, auto burns him basically, right? What up, Jared? I'm chilling. Thanks for the 23. Yeah, the danger of drive rushing out Luke is you give away all that damage. <gasps> that was sick. He's one hit away. Oh no. Oh, he didn't do the heavy knuckle though, so he didn't get the hard knockdown. Oh no. Nice reaction. This is a, this is a drop from Otani actually. If he does drive rush heavy bunch in the perfect knuckle here, then he gets Oki, right? You can dash, 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 and then pressure, and then do whatever. And then because he didn't get perfect knuckle, his pressure was way worse, which meant he was back here throwing a fireball, which means he loses. Yeah, I don't know how the hell he level one that so fast. Like, that was beast. You guys like mirror matches? This is probably going to be a crazy matchup here and already. Akira starting. Yeah, if you reverse a level one against Luke doing light, medium, heavy into fireball, you lose. Yeah. Right Damn, he DI'd him right. That's the spot you're supposed to DI. This was a DI right there. Oh, hooligan throw. Cannon spike.
frames of startup, I believe, before it actually gets the throw. And so, you know, a lot of people who stand up on reaction to seeing jumps, they just get tossed like that. It, it, it's a hard move to check, to be honest with you. So, I'm surprised we don't see Tammy. Who's my favorite character to play in Grand Blue so far? Honestly, I think the whole cast is pretty fun. Oh, my. Oh, no anti -air? I'm actually shocked that Kara wasn't ready for that. Oh, wait, it's not just Luke players. I kept seeing Luke, people say Luke players keep whiffing and then just doing super. Hey, it's not just Luke players. Look, it's Kami players too. Maybe it's just a Japanese player thing. He tried to buffer super off of it, thinking it was going to whiff punish and then it didn't work. It was a whiff punish buffer. I mean, so was the Luke one. Make sure you spend it all. You can't take it with you. Next round, you're getting a full bar. It was an accident. He tried to do crouch medium into super, thinking it was going to whip punish, and then it just didn't hit. Here we go. Nice ODDP to get himself out of that corner and to get himself out of the Nice. nice. You damn fan now. Oh, and he wasn't ready for the second one. Kazunoko is a sicko. He gets anti air and then he just immediately jumped again. He's like, what up? What up, Z Spike? Very, very shallow dive kick. What the heck? That oh. back medium punch just missed. Sammy actually got to the other side, and there we go. Akira will you spend Her DP is so good, but it doesn't give her Oki, which is a big deal. That is game over right there. Like EXDP side swapping your opponent into the corner is so strong, but losing, like having someone go full screen and not getting Oki is unfortunate. You know, Kazunoko, he's so known for being kind of an unpredictable, uh, crazy guy himself. I mean, it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, you want Yeah, to I think Kami is actually interesting because honestly, even though we have two here, uh, what's it called? Being able to catch you, you know, it, 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 like even though we have a mirror here for this character, like she actually is not that common in other regions in Japan. She's just really popular and she's really strong. They think she's like top five, right? Or some people I've heard her, somebody put her like top three. There was a couple. It's just this character, Kami, is not as popular. If you watch like North America tournaments, the only Kami player you see is Pong. What a havoc. You know what I mean? Like it's it's just really punk that you see on this character at a super high level most of the time in like top threes of tournaments and stuff. We have other good cami players, but like at you know at the highest level. I mean, why isn't she more popular? She is popular here. She's not as popular in North America. Like it's the same kind of idea that uh you know like as an example, um. Uh, what's it called? Like, DJ is really, really strong, right? How many high-level DJ players are there in North America? Like, who? There, there's, like, only a few people who play. He's, like, way less popular than Ken, Luke, and JP, right? Whereas in Asia, DJ is, like, much more common. Did you see that? That was hilarious. What an what anti here? Very, a very interesting interaction. I have never seen that. Here we go. Akira trying to go crazy. Try to bait out the wow dive kick. So yeah, like I don't know. It is quite interesting that the char the characters are just not as popular in some regions. Here we go. Like Guile. Guile is much more popular here than he is in Asia. Oh, nice. That was a good check to so avoid the command grab. Oh, Chip. There's nothing he could do there about the Chip either. Yeah, North America, we have a lot of Guiles. No, North America, I think we have the most Guiles, actually. But like in Japan, there's there's like... Uh, Higuchi, right? Yeah, Japan in the beginning of the game didn't think Ga was as strong, and now they've changed their mind. Oh, 
So, you know, different places have different amounts of certain characters. The character is holding up back there because when your drive gauge is that low, it's better to take straight hits than block anything and get burnt. Aww. Kazunoko is down. He is so down to do it. Bot nice. You guys thought Honda was top tier in the beginning? I don't know if ev I mean everywhere people's first impression of Honda was strong in the beginning because he's easy to play and good at the start of the game. Can we see a fourth? Oh, he tried to shimmy. He tried to shimmy. A nice button press and the side switch again. Cammy, one of the powers that she has, the ability. Oh, missed dive kick. Oh, you know what that was. He could have killed if he wanted to, but honestly, it would have cost him a lot of meter. And yeah, his position was so good. I don't think he needed to. A lot of meaty lights, and it's been working. Very reminiscent of the gun. Yeah, not gonna lie. He likes to, he likes to pepper all those oh, backdash into a clean little whip punish. I can't stand that QC. Honestly, it, it feels like Kazunoko has not been able to establish very well in neutral. Like Akira is just forcing way better. It feels like Kazunoko very rarely is on the back foot. Normally he, he seems so confident, but in this matchup it's like... He's trying to be the defender and it's not really working. Oh my god, he, what, you, what? you did that shit twice in a row. Oh, that's a big drop. That is a big drop. So Kazunoko might have thought, hey, jab out of the air, reset into the drive impact. And then he saw, oh no, counter hit knockdown. I'm a genius. Oh no. And so Akira now with the 2 1 lead over Kazunoko. Yeah, look at Kazun like Kazunoko is just not able to establish, right? Ready for the dive kick conversion. Picking up dive kicks. Akira waking up with the OD one. Every single time, I think it's been uh, one of the strong suits of catching people off guard when it comes to the wake up situation. Dude, he just empty jumps at him, and Kazunoko just yeah. I mean, he is forcing way more. Wow, nice little walk back. The reset. I mean, he's just, he's playing way too well. I think Ka Kazunoko looks a little lost here. There's a big chance though. Kazunoko can win this round. Oh my, he just jumps twice. Oh my God. Oh, he could have anti and won. Wow, he was out of range. Dude, how does he just, he just runs at Kazunoko. Kazunoko's not ready. I think he just keeps not expecting him to commit. He's just overwhelmed by the air, the ground approach together. It's just, he's not ready. It's like Kazunoko's looking to check on the ground. He's in the air already. Like, he's looking to check the air. He crouching medium kicks him. He walks up. This is the first time he's like found his footing in a bit. Yeah, I mean. And so Kazunoko's got to pay attention to that as well. See him buffering as well, back and forth. Man, he just can't be stopped. It, it just feels like he just he walks up and he does whatever approach option he wants and it works. Looks like he was attacking. Yeah. fell for the bait. This upper spiral arrow. Charging up. Oh my God. He just killed him, right? Well, I think if he could have combined in a level two, maybe. Wow. What was that? That's a like cross up, by the way. Cross up. Kill. Did Kazunoko walk into what it or something? That? What do you mean that was a cross up? Pulled himself out of the corner? Kill. Oh, he crouched medium kicked and then he got himself crossed up. <laughs> okay. What was that? What do you mean that was I a think cross he did up? something. What? I don't know what he did. Yeah, I think crouching medium kick and then after crouching medium kick, he moved forward and got crossed up. Very close attention to that match. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think he kind of didn't have a way to bail into level two on the, the impact. Nice. Oh no, it didn't combo. Also, mashing drive impact against Luke comboing you is pretty good. Uh, and the reason is that if he drops into any knuckles, the knuckles are universally drive impactable. So it's a really common response if you think Luke might drop the combo to um, drive impact them. 
Nice. Oh, this is huge for Otani. This spot is real good. He doesn't kill here, though. So I don't think he should spend too much. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, my. He still wins in one hit, though. Yeah, driving back is really good against Luke doing... Um, oh, he's going to kill him with level 3. Nice. Easy peasy combo, too. He did light punch charge, Knuckle, because it's not droppable compared to medium. Oh, that combos? Counter hit sending medium hit combos in a sending like it. Nice. That's the scariest thing about her dive kick too. She can always just decide. Okay, cool. Like I did negative dive kick. Time to parry. Like, and you could just you'd be like, well, all right. And like, if you try to throw her and she just takes a step back and hits heavy punch, then you're like, well. I mean, Luke wins this in like two good hits, which is very scary. Like, he needs a big hit into level three and one other thing, and, and he's good to go here. Yeah, now he needs like any hit. Yeah. Oh my, he didn't cancel the. I mean, there's no way to know, right? There, like, there's no way to hit confirm. Like before, oh, no wow, way. you the are the that, greatest gamer of all time. Are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah, you got to be him for that, for sure. <clears throat> you got to be a beast. That was impressive. Right, right, yes, yes. My immediate right rush here. There's that stand light punch check. He said very important for characters with a good walk speed. Whoa. Check his DNA. Check him DNA. What a reaction against the sandblast! We haven't seen that in a long time. Nice, good spot. You do get out of the corner, but that crosscut DP hurts a lot. Ooh. That round was tough. <clears throat> After this ends, am I gonna stop streaming? No, I'm gonna play. I do need to grab some water though. I need some water. My throat is sore from talking this whole time. Mm -hmm. I like the level two here for burnout. Yeah, modern is less popular than it was early on, I think, actually, but people still play on it. Oh man, he was too afraid to just hit a hit a heavy, I think, because he didn't want to get parried, maybe, so he delayed light to try and get the burnout. Nice, double drive rush. Easy peasy. My travel was good. I did get delayed on the way back though. I got delayed for like, you know when you wake up early for an early flight and you're like, all right, cool. When I'm, when I get on the plane, I'm going to sleep and I'm going to get home and take a nap. It's going to be great. They delayed my flight for like two hours and I was like, oh no. Oh, he didn't build level two. Next day wins though for Luke. What a life yep. A Double drive rush. Easy peasy level two. Yeah, he did an easy tournament combo. But yeah, I was really sad. I was flying Alaskan Airlines actually. So you know, when you're gonna fly and you see the name of your airline trending on social media like a couple days before your flight, that's not a good feeling. That that does not feel good. When you're gonna fly Alaska Airlines and you see Alaska Airlines trending on Twitter, you're like, that's not good. <clears throat> you're a little concerned, you know? Yeah, so I fell asleep. Like, okay, so they delayed my flight and I fell asleep. And then I woke up and on my gate, it said like a flight to Las Vegas. And I was like, wait, I'm not going to Las Vegas. So I walked up and I was like, sorry, ma'am, uh, is this the, and she's like, I'm not here anymore. I'm going over here to do my thing on this place. And she just left me. So I had to walk around and like find someone who was actually working my flight. And I was like, hey, is this the flight to like LA? Like, I don't, it changed. And he's like, oh yeah, it still is. We just, it's not up on the board. And I was like, oh my God, I was going through it, bro. 
Like, you guys just changed it to say a different place while I was sleeping for fun? Anyway. Gotta find a way out of this corner. Does get that, but didn't combo off of the counter hit. Yeah, for fun? For funsies? No anti -air. It's kind of far, no? Yeah. And, and again, you're scared of the Ooh, those, those really jump angles really are really tough because if you commit DP too early and he, he uh, dive kicks, it might not work. Yeah. Oh, whip oh, punish. I think he just saw he had level 3 and was like, I'll just heavy knuckle, I'll be fine. Just buy a plane forehead. Good idea. I'm always sad because I love those emotes. I'm always mashing on the up button for the smile. Oh, man. That was a good parry. And look at the drive gauge. Side swap plus you get to take their drive gauge plus ratio plus the streets. Know that my red outfit's better than yours. Too late. Perfect parry into the throw. This is bad news for Akia. He's stuck in the corner now. Oh, oh, wow! Double jump, and he just like no anti air at all. Just frozen. Afraid. Honestly, it's really hard to anti. Like when you watch as a spectator, you just think like, how does Cammy get away with all these jumps, right? But then you go on a rank and you like boot up and Cammy jumps at you and you're like, whoa, kind of weird that she's up in the air up there, huh, guys? And then you just don't anti her. Like it's so hard. After Grand Blue, I expected Luke to do back throw into 6XL. Yeah. I was playing Grand Blue the other day. And then um, when I watched Street Fighter right after, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, kind of weird that nobody's doing 6XL. It's so, it, it's so tantalizing the press oh my. Yeah. See, I mean, like, how many jumps is that in a row that just have not been anti aired, right? And like, I don't know. You're just so, like, afraid of all these other options that she has that she jumps and you're like, oh God. Oh, that doesn't work, huh? Level three, yes, sir. Get that uh, burnout. Heavy punch. Oh, that was an anti. I'll take that. Oh no. I, I think she's dead. Not quite. He didn't have enough drive gauge. Yeah. But it still sets him up pretty nicely. For now, perhaps? That did a shit ton, though. Yeah, and Chip Sandblaster is a problem. Sandblast! Oh, no, he's gonna wait. Yeah, he's gonna be careful. He's scared of the jump or the spin knuckle. Oh! Oh, that wasn't even a punish. It wasn't enough to kill! Oh my! No! Otani just. He got a little scared. He got a little scared. Yes. Oh yeah, that is what he <laughs> Oh my god. I think Akira has realized that this this whole jump situation oh, Otani is not Himothy. He's not a Kawano who anti aired literally everything. He's like, alright, cool, I'm just gonna go. I'm good. Yeah, I mean I think he just recognized it, right? He's like, cool, I'm good to go. I'm not getting anti aired, I'm just gonna clean it up. You're finished. Listen, this is classic commentator's curse. He was down 0 and 2. Now he's looking at mass point. Right? And, and even in some of those games. Like, if you're Otani here, he, like, you're so lost on the air. Oh, he empty jumped. He wanted the distance, but it's too much on startup. Oh, man. Poor Otani, right? Like, he, he, he recognized, I think, like, okay, I just need to go for this. I need to anti air more. And then immediately, Akira just empty jumps, and then he anti airs, and then he dies. Like, it, that feels so bad. What up, Ruggie, by the way? Thanks for the sub. Oh. Ooh, that was scary. If that didn't work, he was going to get burnt. Uh-oh. Dude, look at Akira. He's in burnout, and it looks like he's not. Like, he's the one chasing here. Oh, there's nowhere to go. There was nowhere to go. He was stuck. Oh my. No punish. I like the bait attempt with the heavy knuckle, though. Wow. He tried to bait him again. Man, these anti airs this whole set have been such a problem. But when he does get the perfect parry, the positioning is so good, it doesn't end up mattering. Nice. Akira's a beast, dude. 
Did not anti air. Huge. Oh no. Oh no. Drops. The biggest weakness of Luke is the drop of the perfect charge flash knuckle. Oh, and not a lot of drive gates behind him either. No oh way. my Luke, god. Are you serious? Is this gonna He's kill? Dead. Oh my god. He does a whiffs, crouching medium punch, and just like, oh, okay. He just sends it. He's like, why not? I love footsies. I love me some footsies. I like that combo choice, though. The reason that combo choice is cool, I think, is because it, it lets you not spend uh, any drive gauge. You get the regen drive gauge the whole time. He tried to go for the tick throw, but Otani actually got hit by the jump right kick at Kawano with too much advantage on that. If I was Akira, I would have snapped my goddamn keyboard. I don't like what the fuck is this guy doing? Kawano is trying to do right now, and this is actually a really smart tactic for him. I would, you know, before the coming in, I wanted to say Kawano's been playing very careful. Look very at the sh movement. Look at the little uh, sh movement. And, you know, footsies and, and now he starts off this Kawano is little gliding little across, across the screen. screen. That's the hitbox I'm movement. Coming in here thinking similar to what I was, right? Like, oh, he's going to be caught. I need to figure out how to open him. Wow. That's how you feel? He said, nah, I'm good. I saw you not anti air for 30 seconds in the last round. I'm good. You don't, you don't want to anti-air the cameo player? I'm just going to wake up. I'm actually surprised I didn't trade combo. Also, dash forward after throw there into back heavy punch is good to bait people trying to check your, your dash. Oh my god. How did he react to that? He just let him drive rush across the whole screen and then did him. I love it. I love it. And that might be a little bit of Otani still kind of feeling himself after that Akira match right there. All right. Drive rush all you All right, all right, all right. You right out of it and look at this. He gets the neutral war right there. You can you can perfect parry after uh sandblast and dash forward. You don't always get a punish though. It's range dependent is the thing, right? So crouch medium punch buffer into the medium knuckle to land and secure that level three and the burnout as well, because Otani had been spending all that meter. Oh, oh, that was clean. Didn't get perfect knuckle though. It wasn't anything like super significant, but I'm glad it worked out for the first time. That's all it was. He's aimed for that at least three times. Yeah. Three times and oh, yeah, Kawano, he's gonna make short work of this. that was a one, one immediate, like you gotta just do it kind of scenario. Like if you're not immediately reversaling there with super, you're just not ready. Two Luke's in the Japan CBD qualifier means there's two Luke's in the Japan CBD qualifier. Sure does. What was the World Warrior for Japan? It was DJ versus. It was Fudo versus someone, right? Was it a DJ Mirror? No, right. It was DJ versus Ken. What was it? Fudo wasn't in this because he's already qualified, so he didn't even bother playing. No, wasn't ready for that one. Just got caught by the draw, draw drive rush. Was it hot dog? No, it was a Japan qualifier, so Fudo played against someone from Japan. Punish counter, by the way. Auto damage. Sick. Maybe it was a DJ Mirror, honestly. Getting another win here. Going up one game. It might have been. Fudo versus Yamaguchi. It was. It was a DJ mirror. So Japan's first qualifier for Capcom Cup was DJ versus DJ. And their second qualifier is Luke versus Luke. Why is there so many uh, mirrors in Japan? Getting a nice start here for this round. Decent damage here against Kwano and corner carry. Oh no, and Kwano just jumped right out when he threw out a standing heavy punch. Oh. Now low forward is everything for Otani. You get the carry, you get the damage, opting for the advantage. Wow. Ooh, the tackle, but no, sir. Immediate back throw, that feels so bad. Man, Kwano really, really likes this uh, back heavy punch situation. Touch a button. There he is. James is back. Back into the sand as well. Kawano, level three, letting it rip. Not Capcom's going to add air drive rush in season two. I'm so down. That sounds fun. 
Eagle for the advantage again. Oh, Double. Get him. Oh, Get him. Easy peasy combo. Oh, yeah. blast. I would I wouldn't trust myself to do like the fireball into the Imagine, yeah, imagine right. Cammy right. doing jump, so air, drive rush, cross up, air, dive kick. Tying it all up <laughs> also, uh, not too bad, right? Looking at the, the gauge blow. What? That was and you just hit parry. And you block it. You're like, what up? I, what, what did he link that off of? Sandblast. Oh my god, really? I, I mean, I know we've seen Guile do that a million times, but... Character's cool. Lose. Oh yeah, we can add an air parry. Why not? Oh, too oh, far. No, that sucks. Remember we saw that before? Dude, Kawano's... Man, his wake up options, he's really getting the better of Otani so far. Like, stuff like wake up crouching medium kick twice already. Wake up back throw immediately. I think Otani's trying to respect these options, and then Kawano's defense is just too good. Not only his defense in terms of blocking, but his defense in terms of knowing when to reversal. And now he's got full drive gauge and almost full meter. So on one hit he wins. Oh. Dash level two. Oh my hell. He dies to level three. Level three is chip. That's why Kawano is like, yeah, he can't block anything. Because if that's heavy knuckle level three, he's chipped. They should make raw driver rush also cost three bars. Then characters don't have any combos or Oki. Like what happens if you knock someone down in this and then you you want to do drive rush to do Oki? Then you just can't. Like you just, you it's it costs your entire gauge to get pressure. You know, every normal in this game, for the most part, like 95% of normals in this game are minus on block. So to get pressure, you need to drive rush. And if drive rush costs three bars in neutral, then you also can't gain plus frames unless you just burn yourself out. Yeah, imagine playing Zangief against JP, and then you knock JP down with Zangief, and you drive rush for pressure, and you burn yourself out. <laughs> That shit would yeah, suck. And so he did the drive rush cancel in the light. And so I'm not sure if Kawano was trying to interrupt in the middle or something like that. Didn't work out and just got clipped. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this matchup is just slow, defensive, decision making in neutral. Like, there's a lot of explosive stuff too. But I mean, Luke is a beast that's slowing the game down. It's like probably his biggest strength, honestly. Is that his buttons are so good at stopping forward approaches, and his anti-airs are so good, and his fireball is so good. He can really slow the pace of the game down a lot. And Quano couldn't really cancel that because he didn't have drive gauge. Because if he just drive rushes and burns himself out, his spot's pretty bad. Oh, now he's chilling. He's got so much drive gauge. Nice confirm. No, that was fireball. Oh, uh, not. Not the combo I wanted to see, though. Uh, yeah, Otani could have killed there. Oh, he could have. He could have killed. Good choice by Otani to use the medium kick. Right? Yeah, that accidental DP really cost Kwana the whole game. Like, he, it's hard to win after that. Karnia saw this back. Nice. I don't know why he did that, actually. I wonder if he thought it hit. He just committed. Level one, maybe. I thought he might just to get the. Uh, oh. Oh, no. You're big dead. This is his best starter. Dude, the craziest thing about that combo, the reason why it does so much damage is heavy button, heavy button, heavy button, heavy button, heavy button. Yes. It's just all heavy buttons. There's no scaling in that at all. What's, I mean, the, outside of the standard, standard scaling. It feels oh, so nice. Wow, that was good. I'm sure it does. I've only been on the receiving end of it, so I wouldn't be able to say. I like that he's throwing light sandblast so that if he tries to parry, the parry just whiffs. Also, you get this drive gauge for free. Oh, no. Half circle trick for fireballs? Yeah, I think that still works. The trick that people are talking about are if you want to throw a fireball after dashing or walking forward and you don't get DP, then the way to do it... Oh, 
Not yeah, I mean, I think that's GG. I think Otani is just dead here, probably. Is uh, you do a half circle input for the for the fireball instead of doing DP on accident. It helps. Yeah, this is chip. I mean, yeah. What are you gonna do? like? If he throws a fireball there, you're chipped. If you jump and he DPs, you die. Like uh, that spot is really hard to win. Good good patience from Kuano. You would think maybe anticipate that. So Otani went for the jump for that exactly. Right. Two to two. Two to two. This is tournament game. Nice. Dude, he's a fucking wall. Getting in on him is really tough. And Otani extend this into another set. It is looking great for Kawano so far. Buffs for everyone or nerfs the strong characters? You should just do both. Like, you can't just only nerf or only buff. You have to, like, look at the cast and the system changes and make decisions. Like, you know, Luke had changes from the beta, right? They nerfed and buffed Luke from the beta. They nerfed his jab, but then they buffed his light knuckle to have further range. Stuff like that. Like, you can, you can make nerfs and buffs. Like, I think beta Luke was probably better than this Luke, actually. But he, he got nerfs and buffs. Oh no, that sucks. Oh, that is really unfortunate for Otani there. Nice. Good confirm. He didn't spend any drive gauge either, so he didn't have to burn himself out. They nerfed his light punch. They made it slower. They also made it so that his uh, forward heavy punch, it used to be plus on block and not special cancelable on the second hit, which was pretty cheap, I can't lie. Just having forward... Oh, he's dead. Nice. He's, he jump scared him right before his drive gauge came back. The approach there was smart. He didn't really have a way to stuff it right before his drive gauge came back. Yeah, Luke in the beta... Could loot, he could link crouching jab into standing light kick, and he could his jab standing jab was faster. He also had a plus on block forward heavy bunch. But to compensate, they nerfed him and buffed him, so they they made his uh, light knuckle go further, and they made they gave him another change, and they made a second hit of his forward heavy bunch better. It's funny because Beta Luke was absurd in hindsight, but people thought he was not very good, which is you know like nobody knew right, like nobody knew the game. It's funny how that works, right?